So now we're moving on to Artboard 2, which is the pen tool practice. And so we have Artboard 2 right here. Let's go ahead and uncollapse that layer. We're going to create a new layer on top, and it's going to be my design or whatever you want to title it. This is where we're going to be writing on top of the gray areas. And if you want to go down to the gray, so you can always toggle this on and off by clicking on this checkbox, kind of see what that layer has inside of it. You can lock it so that we don't mess with anything anything on the gray layer. So we have our My Design right here, and we're going to use the Pen Tool. The Pen Tool is on the left side here in your tool area. So we went ahead and selected our Pen Tool, and we're going to make sure we're on a stroke. So I'm just going to go up here to my color panel and make sure we just have a stroke on. We do not have a fill. So we're going to click on one side. We're going to create a node, and we're going to create another node on the other side. And just like that, we created a simple line shape just like that so you'll notice on the end it has these rounded caps which is great it looks really nice and polished but let's say we did not want that we're going to go to our stroke panel go ahead and drag it out so you can see and this is where those caps really come in handy so we could do a square cap or we can do any type of cap that we want to have on the ends we could even change the change it to a let me do the end cap change it to a triangle or simple little live preview uh, what you want to do, you can see how infographics can be created really easily this way. But we're going to just leave it at a nice rounded cap by default. So we're going to keep our stroke panel out because we're going to be using stroke a lot in this little practice tool. But let's do the next zigzag shape. Let's get our pen tool and we're just going to click on the bottom. We're just going to create a node, just clicking, creating a node, going up and down, and just really practicing our dexterity with our hands and our mouse or whatever we're using to create the shape. This is just pure practice. You can always zoom in and, and really be detailed on it, but I think it does a good, good job by default. Looking around, and then there we are. And you can see how it has the rounded caps on the ends, but we can also change that to square caps. But let's say we want to change these corners. So you notice that changed just the end caps here. But let's say we don't want the rounded on the other parts, the inside of the stroke, we would just go to join and make that a sharp edge if we wanted to. But I kind of like how Affinity Designer does a default rounded cap, and actually in Adobe Illustrator, it does the default straight cap. So it's kind of nice to have this default rounded cap. Let's say we kind of messed up and some of our points aren't exactly where we want them to be. Let's see how we can manipulate each node. We're going to be using the node tool, which is right up here. So your pen tool and node tool are going to be pretty heavily used. You could always do a keyboard shortcut and do A and then P to switch between the two. So kind of memorize A and P. So if I want to do a pen tool and then I want to switch to the node tool, I press A and then I can manipulate it. So just kind of some shortcuts that really help speed up your workflow. So I have the node tool selected and I can manipulate each one of these nodes just by selecting the node and moving it. So some of these were a little off, which is no big deal. We can move it up and around by just selecting that node tool. And if I want to switch back to creating more, I just switch back and use my little keyboard shortcut, which is going to be P, and I can start to create more again, and then I can switch to, switch to A, and then I can manipulate it. Okay, so we have our first little shape. Now we're going to do some curves. It gets a tiny bit harder to do curves, but that's no big deal. We can do this. So let's select the pen tool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create curves. So we're going to select kind of a top. So I can, I can select long distances to make a curve. So let's say I click all the way down here and I click on a node. I can click and hold and create kind of that circular curve shape. But sometimes you don't always get the curve you'd like. So sometimes you have to take half steps and do several nodes all the way around a shape to get a nice rounded corner. So I'm going to kind of click up here halfway. And I'm going to be able to have a little bit more control over my shape. So now I'm going to click down here and click down here, kind of at the apex of the curve. And then click right here. Don't be afraid to create multiple points. You don't have to create just one node and make this big gigantic curve. Sometimes it takes a couple of node points to create the curve that you want to use. So let's switch to our node tool, which is A, and we're going to be able to manipulate these corners. So let's say that looks a little awkward. 
we have these little handlebars that we can manipulate. So we can kind of get a more smooth curve. We can actually make it taller and smaller. We can move this all around 360 degrees to kind of correct that curve. Let's see if there's anything else we need that's off. And it looks pretty good, but we can always, you know, manipulate these handlebars on any of these node points. And I'm just using the node tool. Okay, so we have our first curve. So now we're going to create some more geometric shapes and our next line. So we created kind of a basic line and we created kind of a diagonal line. Pretty simple. But let's say we want to create precise right angle or perfect lines when we have our pen tool. So if I were to not hold down anything and click and then click over here, it's just a little crooked and I'd have to take my node tool and try to find out where that is. Let's say I just want to draw a straight line and just keep it at that. I'm going to hold down the shift button with the pen tool. Let's start right here with this octagon. I'm going to click holding down shift the entire time and I'm able to create perfect straight lines. It's holding down shift the entire time and I can create a perfect octagon just like that. I'm going back and completing my shape by clicking on the original shape. So now I have a shape that I can toggle on fill or not. So let's do the same thing. We don't need our stroke panel quite yet. So we'll slide that over here. Let's do this more maze pattern. So we click here, hold down shift. Just a little trick that can be very helpful when you're doing geometric shapes and logo design and anything you any kind of illustration or icon design. Just having this as an option, holding down shift, is so much easier than trying to do it yourself manually. Just let the computer do it for you. Let's do a zigzag. We're going to move through these a little bit quicker. We still got a lot to do. We got some icon designs over to the right to do. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to mess this up a little bit on purpose so we can go use our node tool and fix it. So just using my keyboard shortcut A, I have my node tool selected and I'm just going to bring this right back down. Okay, so now we're going to do some curves and some corners. So we're going to select our pen tool again. Let's start here at the bottom corner. Let's click, let's just make a triangle. And I can even hold down the shift button. I can click here, hold down the shift button. We're just going to create a triangle. And we are going to add corners to this. So we have our corner tool right here. So that's kind of the name is obvious. So we're going to be creating some nice smooth corners with our corner tool. Once again, you can use C as a shortcut so you can toggle once you kind of learn all these little shortcuts A, P, and C. You can switch between these two without having to go back and select them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold and create a nice corner. We'll click over here, let's click our node, our corner node, and make a nice corner. Of course, we can adjust this whole shape. I think we made it a little too small. And we can go select our corner tool or you see, and we're pretty darn close. So it's kind of practicing that corner tool. So this is going to be the node tool. We're going to convert it to smooth. Okay, so this is going to be our next project. So let's say we have a sharp angle and we want to make it and convert it to a smooth angle or the other way around. We're going to draw a simple triangle. I'm just going to click up at the top and I'm just going to make kind of a triangle pattern. So let's say I want to smooth this out and kind of bow the lines out a little bit. So I have the node tool selected and I you have some additional options up here in your toolbar and there's one they have a couple of ways you can convert the angles and we are going to do a smooth angle. So I'm just going to click this node and I'm going to make it and convert it to a smooth angle. So you can see how you can convert angles pretty easily. We can even add new, uh, we can manipulate that or we can add new points, our new nodes on here. So I'm going to double click and then create a new node. So I'm just adding a new node because if I didn't add a new node, I wouldn't quite get the curve I want. So I'm going to add a new node. You don't really have to double click, you just have to click once and just move it over so we can kind of work with angles a little bit. 
smooth this out. Need. So if you ever want to convert it back or any node, you can click any individual node, convert it to a right angle or a sharp angle, or convert it right back to a smooth angle. So the curvature tool in Adobe Illustrator is very similar to this tool. It's just kind of called something a little bit different. Uh, just call, I'm just in the node tool and going up to my converting to smooth. Okay, so we've done two sheets of work now and we're gonna get more complex. We're gonna really practice interacting shapes and how to use the divide, subtract, intersect, and divide tools to be able to cut objects out, add objects together, and be able to divide objects up in particular patterns. So this is gonna be very similar to the Pathfinder tool in Adobe Illustrator, but in Affinity Designer, you have your own set of tools to do this.